Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar that we will be doing. It is on when does your team cut its losses. This is a presentation that we're doing for both schools and universities. You're welcome to ask me questions afterwards. My name is Ralph Spears. I work as part of the team, the JSC Investment Challenge team, and I'm here today to assist you in understanding more about losses, cutting your losses, and understanding how you can position yourself that you don't lose too much uh, should the share start falling uh, and you're not sure when to actually get out. So I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can. Uh, feel free to post them in the top right hand corner there. You can push questions or, or, or actually click um, chat and you will be able to uh, have your questions answered. The first thing I need to uh, emphasize is that um, everything here is uh, not advice. This is an investment challenge game and you need to understand that uh, please do not go and take this and, and try it in real life. This is purely for the game purposes. All my presentation slides are towards the game and not towards real trading actually in the stock market with your own personal account. So this is just for the investment challenge game purposes only. Great. So the first thing here, you've got um, an example um, in the income game portfolio where you can see that um, BATS or British um, BTI basically overall has lost 5.4% so far, which is a total of, in this case, because 343,000 was spent, 18,000 Rand loss. And that's only with 5% down. The question is, at what stage do you cut your loss? And that's what I'm going to try and help you with today. Another example in the speculator game. There you've got CIL. And over there, there's a loss of 7.4% currently. Do you cut your loss at 2%, 3%, 5%, 7%, 10%? When do you cut that loss? You've got another one over here. A saw. Um, here you can see it's 14% down on the 19th of July. Okay, That's 27,000 Rand loss. You've got also their CIL, which is down 2.9%. That was last week sometime. If you go and look on the 26th of July, today, you can see it's down 18.1% or so. So it's continued. You've, you've lost even more an extra 4%. And not only that, CIL has actually lost also around about 4%. So you need to have a stop loss in place before you place the order so that you don't run into effect as now I'm 18% down. What do I do? Do I still hold it or do I continue? So here's the problem with losing too much. If the, the, the fall in, in the share price You've got 10%. If it falls in 10, uh, by 10% in, in, in value, for you to um, get that percentage gain and get back to, to, to break even, you need to make 11.11%. .11%. If you lost 20% in a share, you would need to gain 25% from that bottom back up to be able to break even. If you look at 50%, if you have a 50% loss in the share price, you would need to, to recover to your original position, need to have the share price increase by 100% from that value. So here's an example. You've got 100 Rand and your loss is 10%. So 10% 10 of 100 Rand, the loss amount is 10 Rand. Left over, you've got 90 Rand. But if you times the loss, you've got 90 Rand, but you times it by the 10% loss amount, you, you're only going back up by 9 Rand. You want to go back to the original amount, so you need to times it by 11.11% .11 to recover the 10 Rand to be able to get back to 100 Rand. If we took another example, if you lost 50%, so you got 100 Rand, lost 50%, the loss amount is 50 Rand, left over is 50 Rand. If you times 50 Rand by the loss of, by the loss amount of 50%, you would only receive 25 Rand back which will not recover the total amount. So you need to now 
have the share price increase by 100% in order to get back that 50 Rand and be able to break even. So the point is, is that you need to keep your losses um, small because it's extremely difficult to recuperate that, those amounts and those percentages when they become too big. Over here is something you need to consider before placing a trade. The first thing, obviously, is you need to know where you're going to enter. So you've, you've identified the place to enter. As a team, you know where, what price you want to enter at. But you need to decide what is your stop loss as a team. And there are two things that you can use, a hard stop or initial stop and a trailing stop. And that is our focus for today is on the stop, the hard stop, the initial stop. You can, you can call it either of the two. And then um, the other point that we're not going to focus on today, but you also need to consider having a target price if it goes in your favor. So let's look at hard stop and initial stop. Um, what it really means is, it is a, is a price level your shares drop to where you cut your losses and with, a, with some of the stockbrokers in real life, you can have a sell order immediately placed the moment it reaches that level, but for the game, we don't have that functionality. Okay? For example, if you went and took um, a hard stop these are some of the different examples you can have. You can have a percentage stop. The share drops by 2%, or it could be 3%, or it could be 4%. But you decide as a team, we would like to stick to 2%. So if I put 10,000 Rand in the stock market, and it drops by 2%, okay, then I'm going to get out at 200 Rand. Okay? If it drops... By 3%, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut my loss at 300 Rand. So you as a team decide on the percentage. Okay, You could decide on the Rand amount. For example, as a team, you're not prepared to lose more than 1,000 Rand. Or you could look at recent low stop. That's the lowest low in the past couple of days that the share price has gone to. So you look back and you see in the last 5 days or 10 days, what was the lowest price and the lowest low that it actually went to? Or you could use um, a volatility-based stop. The, there are different um, shares that have different swings. And what I mean by that is the mining stocks. It's, it's, it's common for a mining stock to, to go up or down. It could go up by 5% in a day, 10% in a day. Uh, if you look at Combine or yesterday, I believe it went up somewhere around 17%. Okay, So they are a lot more volatile. And you would use a volatility stop um, and basically look back in history on the last couple of days or weeks on the share price and create a volatility stop. The second stop that you could consider using is a trailing stop. You use the stop to catch the upswing of the share price. And when it starts to fall, it's that when you get out, locking in some of the profits. You have a trailing at a distance from the share price to give you to give the share some room to move, but not too far away that you lose all your profit. And I'm going to show you an example in the next few minutes so that you actually understand. Some examples are moving averages. You could use different moving averages that will be below the share price that you, the moment the share price crosses that moving average downwards, you would then exit the position. Or the volatility-based stops, there are many different ways of doing it, but here you've got, uh, in this example, ATR trailing stops. And I've put there, Google it, okay? Uh, today's lesson, uh, I'm not going to incorporate uh, everything about ATR um, trailing stops. Um, if you would like to use that, you can go and Google it. There are some presentations um, and videos online that you can go and actually watch exactly how to calculate the ATR. Cut your losses and let your winners run. And that's really the theme of a trailing stop. So here's an example in the game where Mr. Price, in this example, I went and bought Mr. Price 
and you can see so far up until yesterday it's made 17 percent return okay but let's go and look at the different um, prices and how we entered it basically um, the 26th of May that's when it was entered and it was at a price of a hundred and 47 rand and 50 cents it's actually below that red dot it's on that over there where those two lines cross and that was at 147 rand and 50 cents but before you enter as i said to you earlier important things that need to be decided before trading you need to make sure obviously you've got your entry price you need to have a hard stop or initial stop and in this example the the initial stop or hard stop that was used was 138 rand and 62 cents. The trailing stop that was used was a 380R, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more down the line. And your take profit, um, instead of saying I want to exit when it reaches 150 rand or 160 rand, because that might just be a guess, what you can do is you use a tr the trailing stop to actually exit the position. So what you're doing is you're allowing the share to continue. You're letting your, your winners run. And the moment it starts turning down after a nice upswing, it will then be stopped out by your trailing stop. So instead of saying, I'm going to exit at 150 Rand, because if you look at the share price, you could have, at any stage here, got out at around about 150, 160, um, or over here, 150, somewhere around there, uh, when it started going down again, and that might have made you nervous and you jump out. But, you know, if you actually went and used a trailing stop, you can see what happens in the next few slides. So, here, um, there are different options, as I've said to you earlier, about the hard stop and initial stop. For example, a 2% loss, that hard stop would be, if we're going to spend 100,000 Rand, a 2% loss would be 2,000 Rand. You would exit out the moment you have lost 2,000 Rand. And you have decided this before as a team, before you entered. You, you could have a Rand amount. Okay, which is in this case, if you're using 100,000, it is 2.5 percent. But you could say we don't want to lose more than 2,500 rand. And if you look at where this share was entered at on the 26th of May, if you look at the, the 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 day before the 25th, the low price of that day was 143 rand and 76 cents. The low of the recent low and that's in the last couple of days the 18th of may was 138 rand and 62 cents that is where it dipped down over there at 138 rand and 62 cents that was a 6.4 percent if from the place where you entered to that low that 6.4 percent that you would lose if you chose to make that your your initial or hard stop or, as I said earlier, you could use a volatility stop. And here, the ATR stop is at 139 Rand. So, there are different options. You can choose any one of these types of stops. And these are just different options as a team you could use. You need to decide as a team which one suits you. Are we going to just use a percentage, a Rand amount? Are we going to look at the previous lows? Or are we going to look at volatility? we can decide as a team which way to go the next few days in this trade on the 29th of may it made a low of 144 rand and 30 cents it dropped to a, the low of 2.2 percent here you can see if we had a two percent loss stop loss and we stuck to it even um the next day or whenever it was whatever happened the moment it hit a low of two percent we would have jumped out you can choose on what you want to base the amount on or the percentage do you want it on the close do you want to work it out on the open do you want to work it out on the low it's up to you but the share fell the next day or the next couple of days by 2.2 percent and if you had a hard stop of two percent you would have 
taken that exit and you would have then obviously in this case lost out uh, but that depends on obviously your money management and, and and how tight you want your stop loss so if you had taken um, a trailing stop loss using a 30-day moving average firstly the moving average is above the share price you entered at so technically you couldn't use it immediately so you would have your 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 hard stop your initial stop and that would be your exit point but once your share price goes through the moving average like you see it's done here then you would have that as a trailing stop and on the 26th of June it you stopped out but you made a small profit of 3.28 percent if you um, including brokerage because remember, brokerage is 1% in, 1% out, roughly 1.28% profit you would have made. Okay, it's not much, but it depends on the stock and it depends on which share you're looking at, how the different moving averages, you can play around with the different moving averages. You can have a 30-day moving average, 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average. You can choose the parameters, but some people use a moving average as a trailing stop. Going to the trailing stop with a volatility um, stop called ATR. And remember, I've told you to go and Google it. It's an average true range. It's a volatility stop. Basically, it takes the absolute value of the difference between the high and the low of today, the, the close of today versus the low of yesterday, the close of today versus the high of yesterday, and you take that max and you work out an average over the past couple of days, you choose, can be seven days, 14 days. In my example, I'm using a 14-day average. And that would give you um, that red line that's underneath there that you would plot on your chart, and you'd be able to see that that is the distance away from the share price that the 3 ATR is, okay? Three times the average true range. And basically, that kept you in the share and is still keeping you in the share um, because it has, has yet to breach that ATR line. And that is how uh, this stop loss works, a, a trailing stop loss. And that is why we're still in Mr. Price at 17% profit right now because of the trailing stop is keeping us in there. And it's way past our initial stop. We don't have to worry about that anymore. The trailing stop is what's going to get us out of this trade the moment the share price breaches that trailing, that trailing stop with that ATR. But remember, the ATR increases every day because it's continuously calculating the average true range over the past couple of days. And in this case, it's, it's calculated over the past 14 days. Every day, it relooks at the prices. My final thoughts of this presentation. There's six months to this game, and in fact now it's August and September that you've got. So you've got very little time. You cannot afford to hold on to shares that keep falling in value. You don't have time on your side. You need to protect your capital. So whether you're watching this now next year and you've got six months, or whether you're watching it now and you've only got two months left, you've got to be careful. You cannot hold on to a losing trade for too long in the game. You want to start cutting your losses at some stage and you want to be able to, to keep that capital to, to invest it again. So decide on your stop loss strategy and stick to it as a team. Always decide before you enter a trade, what is the stop loss is it going to be? And make sure that you pen it down, put it down. There is no perfect stop. There are many different strategies. You could use different moving averages, different ATRs, different volatility, uh, volatility um, stop losses. You could use a hard stop percentage of 2%, 3%, 4%. There is no perfect stop. But don't wait until it's too late because a lot of the teams allow their losses to continue. Like I showed you in one of the slides, it's now 18% loss on a, um, a saw. And you don't want to be in a position where you feel that it's so far, you've lost so much already that you're not prepared to cut that loss. Be careful. Remember, it could continue to fall. And then please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We would love you to uh, at least engage with us. And uh, if you've got any questions, you can always email us at schools at jsc.ca.za or the school's website, schools.org.
jsc.za and of course we've got the university website university.jsc.za and the email address university at jsc.za so if you've got any questions for me i would love to take them now my presentation is concluded thank you very much for listening to me um, i hope you've learned something about uh, stop losses and about cutting your stop losses don't allow them to run too far into the negative